What is a pulmonary contusion? Have you ever wondered what happens to our lungs when they experience a sudden impact? A pulmonary contusion, or lung contusion, is a type of lung injury that occurs due to blunt trauma to the chest. This injury damages the small blood vessels, known as capillaries, within the lung tissue. As a result, blood and fluid can accumulate in the tiny air sacs, called alveoli, and the spaces between them, known as interstitial spaces. And like a pulmonary laceration, which involves a tear in the lung tissue, a contusion does not involve any cuts. Pulmonary contusions are often seen in situations involving blunt chest trauma. Common causes include car accidents, falls, or injuries sustained during sports activities. The mechanism behind this injury typically involves rapid deceleration. For instance, when a moving chest strikes a fixed object, it compresses the lung tissue against the chest wall. This compression can disrupt the alveolar capillaries, leading to fluid leakage into the lung tissue. Symptoms of a pulmonary contusion can vary widely. In mild cases, a person may not show any symptoms at all. However, more severe injuries can lead to noticeable signs. These may include difficulty breathing, also known as dyspnea, and a bluish discoloration of the skin called cyanosis, which indicates inadequate oxygenation. Other symptoms can include coughing up blood, rapid breathing, chest pain, and low blood pressure. To diagnose a pulmonary contusion, healthcare providers typically relying on a combination of clinical history, physical examination, and imaging studies. Chest radiography, or x-rays, may not reveal clear signs of a contusion until 24 to 48 hours after the injury. Computed tomography scans are more sensitive and can detect contusions much earlier. When it comes to treatment, the approach is primarily supportive. Supplemental oxygen is often provided to improve oxygen saturation levels. In cases where breathing is severely compromised, mechanical ventilation may be necessary. Careful fluid management is also important to avoid fluid overload, which can worsen pulmonary edema. Close monitoring of respiratory function, oxygen saturation, and fluid balance is essential. In severe cases, complications such as acute respiratory distress syndrome or pneumonia may develop. These situations may require more intensive interventions, including extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, which is a technique used to provide life support. For first responders, recognizing the signs of respiratory distress and hypoxia is vital when responding to potential chest trauma. Providing supplemental oxygen, monitoring vital signs closely, and being aware of the possibility of delayed symptoms are all key steps in managing these injuries effectively.